Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss topic interpolation and the Lagrange polynomial. Let us discuss the motivation for interpolation and the Lagrange polynomial. One of the most useful and well known classes of functions mapping the set of real numbers into itself is algebraic polynomials. An algebraic polynomial is of the form Pnx equal to a n x power n plus a n minus 1 x power n minus 1 plus etc plus a 2 x square plus a 1 x plus a naught where n is a non-negative integer and the coefficients a n a 1 minus 1 etc a 1 a naught are real constants. One reason for their importance is that they uniformly approximate the continuous functions. That means suppose we have a function which is defined and continuous on a closed and bounded interval. Suppose we have a function f which is defined and continuous on this uh, interval, closed and bounded interval. Then we can find or there exists a polynomial that is as close to the given function f as desired. That is for a function f which is defined and continuous on a closed interval, we can find a polynomial. We can, uh, we can find a polynomial of this type that is close to the given function f. That is what is called a interpolation. This result can be seen in the Weierstrass approximation theorem. We know the Weierstrass approximation theorem is suppose f is defined and continuous on a closed interval a b. For each epsilon greater than 0, there exists a polynomial p of x. There exists a polynomial p of x with the property that absolute value of f of x minus p of x is less than epsilon for all x in closed a b. That is, suppose we have a function f which is defined and continuous on the closed interval a b, then for each epsilon greater than 0, we can see a polynomial p of x such that absolute value of f of x minus p of x is less than epsilon for all x belongs to closed a b. That is, this is the pictorial representation of this uh, Weierstrass approximation theorem. Let this be x axis and this be y axis. Consider the function y equal to f of x. Let this be the graph of the function y equal to f of x. Now, by this theorem, we can see a polynomial p of x such that absolute value of f of x minus p of x is less than epsilon for each epsilon greater than 0. This means that negative epsilon is less than f of x minus p of x less than epsilon. That implies negative epsilon minus f of x is less than minus p of x which is less than epsilon minus f of x. So when we multiply throughout this by minus 1, uh, this inequality will change. So we have epsilon plus f of x is greater than p of x which is greater than f of x minus epsilon. That means f of x minus epsilon less than p of x which is less than f of x plus epsilon. That means we can find a polynomial p of x which lies uh, inside this that is f of x minus epsilon and f of x plus epsilon. So here we have f of x is this. This is the graph of f of x. So this let uh, for a for a fun, for a uh, epsilon f greater than zero. Let this be the graph of f of x minus epsilon. That is we are subtracting uh, at each of these point f of x by epsilon. So this is the graph of the uh, function f of x minus epsilon and this is the graph of f of x plus epsilon and p of x is lies between f of x minus epsilon and f of x plus epsilon. From this figure we can see that the uh, polynomial p of x is lies between this f of x minus epsilon and f of x plus epsilon. So this is the Weierstrass approximation theorem. We can find for any function f which is defined and continuous on closed jb. For each epsilon greater than 0, we can see a polynomial p of x which, which is close to f of x. Now another reason for considering class of polynomials in the approximation of functions is that 
for the derivative and indefinite integral of polynomials are easy to determine. That is, we can determine the derivative and the integrals of uh, polynomials very easily. And also, the derivative and uh, integrals of a polynomial are again a polynomial. So, for that reason, also we can uh, use the polynomials for the approximation of continuous functions. The Taylor's polynomials were used or described as one of the fundamental building blocks of numerical analysis. The Taylor's polynomials agrees as closely as possible with a given function at a specific point, but they concentrate their accuracy near that point. That means when we are using the Taylor, Taylor's polynomial for expo approximation, the polynomials agree as closely as possible with a given function at a specific point only. But a good approximating polynomial needs to provide a relative accuracy over an entire interval. Taylor's polynomial do not generally do this. That means Taylor's polynomial only uh, give an accuracy uh, near the specific point, but it, it, it will not give uh, an accurate result or a, a, an accuracy in approximation on an entire interval. For example, suppose we calculate the first six Taylor polynomial about x, x not equal to 0 for the function f of x equal to e power x. Since f of x equal to e power x, we have f dash of x equal to e power x itself and f double dash of x is also e power x, etc. So all the derivatives of f of x are e power x. So at the point x not equal to 0, we have f of 0 is equal to e power 0 which is 1 f dash of 0 which is again e power 0 which is 1 etc. So at all these point, uh, all the derivatives have the value 1 at the point x equal x not equal to 0. So we have the Taylor series of this e, 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 e power x at the point x not equal to 0 that is the Maclaurin series is nothing but e power x is equal to 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus s cube by 3 factorial plus x power 4 by 4 factorial plus x power 5 by 5 factorial plus etc. So if you are considering the first six Taylor's polynomial, we have the first Taylor polynomial that is p naught x is nothing but 1 itself. So the second Taylor's polynomial p1x which is 1 plus x that is third polynomial is 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial. Then p3 is fourth one is p3. p3 is 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial. Then p4 is nothing but 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial etc. up to x power 4 by 4 factorial that is p4. p5 is up to x power 5 by uh, 5 factorial. So these are the first 6 Taylor polynomials of e power x about x not equal to 0. Now if you are plotting the graphs of these polynomial, these Taylor's polynomials, we get like this. This is the graph of our function y equal to e power x, and this is the graph of the first polynomial p naught. You know, p naught is nothing but one here, p naught equal to one, and p one is equal to one plus x, etc. So this is the graph of p naught. This is for p one. This is p two, p three, etc. So if you are considering the higher degree polynomials. It will approaches to actually it will approaches to this given function but in this function actually as we move away from 0 as we move away from 0 we have the higher degree polynomials also will give the a higher error because uh, this is exponential function so as we move uh, away from uh, 0 it will be like this so we will get uh, the error will be increasing actually okay so the uh, better approximation will be uh, actually obtained for uh, the higher uh, polynomials but uh, although better approximations are obtained for f of x equal to e power x if higher degree taylor polynomials are used but it is not true for all functions that is for all functions uh, we have no guarantee for that uh, we will get the better approximation for a higher degree polynomials also. For example, consider the function f of x equal to 1 by x and if you expand this uh, by using Taylor's series or Taylor's polynomial at the point x not equal to 1 
and we are approximating the value of this function f of x at the point 3. Actually, we have f of 3 is equal to 1 by 3. So, if you are uh, finding or, or uh, approximating using Taylor's polynomials at the point x not equal to 1, we, we have actually f of x equal to 1 by x implies that is f of x equal to x power minus 1. Therefore, f dash of x is equal to minus x power minus 2 f double dash of is equal to minus 1 whole square into 2 into x power minus 3 etc. So in general we have the k the derivative is f, uh, f k of x is nothing but minus 1 power k k factorial into x power minus k minus 1. So the Taylor's polynomials are the nth Taylor polynomial pn r is, is nothing but summation k from 0 to n f k at 1 divided by k factorial into x minus 1 power k. Because we have the Taylor series expansion is uh, at the point x equal to 1. x equal to 1 is nothing but f of x is equal to f of 1 plus f dash of 1 divided by 1 factorial into x minus 1 plus f double dash of 1 divided by 2 factorial into x minus 1 whole square plus etc. This is nothing but summation n from sorry uh, summation k from 0 to infinity. Uh, f k of 1 divided by k factorial x minus k power sorry x minus 1 power k this is the uh, Taylor series expansion so Taylor polynomial p n is nothing but that is summation k from 0 to n so that is p n so p n is summation k from 0 to n uh, f k 1 divided by k factorial into x minus 1 power k that is fk is nothing but this so fk1 is nothing but we have fk1 is equal to minus 1 power k k factorial into 1 power minus k minus 1 that is 1 power minus k minus 1 when we replace x by 1 so this is nothing but minus 1 power k into k factorial so fk1 is minus 1 power k into k factorial divided by k factorial so we can divide this k factorial so we will get this so, pnx is equal to summation k from 0 to n minus 1 to the power k x minus 1 power k. So, actually we know pnx is the Taylor polynomial with the first n terms of the Taylor series. Okay. So, to approximate f of 3 uh, equal to 1 by 3 by pn3, we have this is the uh, pnx which is approximates the function f of x equal to 1 by x. So, this Taylor polynomial pnx approximate the function f of x equal to 1 by x. So, at the point 3, we have f of 3 equal to 1 by 3. So, the approximation will be pn3. pn3 equal to summation k from 0 to n minus 1 power k, 3 minus 1 power k. So, so if we are changing the values for n, so for p0, we get when n equals 0, this is p0 of 3. This is p0 of 3. This is p1 of 3. This is P2 of 3, P3 of 3, etc. P4 of 3 is 11, P5 of 3 is minus 21, and etc. So, when we looking into this uh, approximated values for uh, this function 1 by x at the point 3, we have actual value is 1 by 3. But uh, if, if you are uh, using P0 of 3, it will be 1. And... Uh, uh, if you are taking p1 of x, we, we have the p1 3 is minus 1 and p2 of 3 is 3, p3 of 3 is minus 5 etc. So actually the approximation is a failure here. So when we approximate f of 3 equal to 1 by 3 by pn3 for larger values of n, the approxim approximations become increasingly inaccurate. Okay. So for the Taylor's, Taylor's polynomials, all the information used in the approximation is concentrated at the single number x0. Okay, we know for this Taylor polynomial, the approximation is concentrated at the single point x0. So, these polynomials will generally give inaccurate approximations as we move away from x0. That is, that is as we move away from 3 here, we are getting inaccurate approximations. So, this is a limitation for of, of uh, using Taylor's approximation. So, for ordinary computational purposes, uh, it is more efficient to use other methods that uh, include information at various points. Okay, not, not, as, not at the uh, information at a single point. So, the primary use of uh, the Taylor polynomials in numerical analysis is not for approximation purpose, but 
it is used for derivation of numerical techniques and error estimations so that's all for now uh, we can discuss the lagrange interpolating formal polynomial uh, in the next lecture